Hello, my young readers, and welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time, welcome. I'm going to take you back down a familiar track with this story with Thomas and friends. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Stay tuned. The name of this story is called Blue Mountain Mystery. It's part of the Thomas and Friends series. Enjoy. It was a busy day at the Blue Mountain Quarry. Rusty shunted trucks of slate. Owen moved equipment up and down the rocky walls. Because of the steep hills and tight turns at the quarry, the engines that worked there were smaller and lighter than other engines. They had special tracks and were called narrow gauge engines. Paxton, a visiting diesel, was impressed by how hard all of the narrow gauge engines worked. If your wheels aren't whirling, says Scarloli, you're not being really useful. Hi guys, I just wanted to pop in and make sure you all understood what shunted mean. It means to push or pull a train or part of a train from the main line to a siding or from one track to another. Just wanted to be sure you guys knew that. Bye! Suddenly, there was a loud noise. Giant stones were falling from London Bridge. Fenders and firebox, shouted Peter Sam. The bridge isn't safe. No one must cross it. At that moment, Ramirez was rolling down from the upper terrace. He tried to stop, but his heavy trucks pushed him toward the dangerous bridge. He sped up so he could race across the bridge before it collapsed. Renez had made it. The bridge thundered apart behind him as he skidded to a stop at the bottom of the hill. Everyone was relieved that the danger was over. Then they saw poor Paxton. He was buried under some fallen stones. He was all right, but he was definitely in need of repairs. Thomas was working hard with Annie and Clarebell when Sir Topham Hatt drove up in Winston the track car. Thomas, I have a special job for you, said Sir Topham Hatt. Paxton has been in an accident and must go to the diesel works for repairs. I need you to work at the quarry in his place. Thomas beamed from buffer to buffer. I like working with my narrow gauge friends, he whistled. Thomas quickly chugged to the Blue Mountain Quarry. The narrow gauge engines were happy to see him and blew their whistles in welcome. Hello, my friends, peeped Thomas. I'm ready to huff my hardest. Just tell me what I need to do. The work at the quarry was hard but fun. Heavy loads of slate were carted down from the upper levels to the stone cutters and stone crushers on the lower levels. Thomas pitched in and hauled boulders with Scarloli. Suddenly, a small green engine darted out of a tunnel. Thomas had never seen him before. Hello, peeped Thomas with a big smile. But the little green engine didn't answer. He quickly rode into another tunnel. Cinders and ashes, whistled Thomas. How strange. I wonder who that little green engine is. Later, Thomas asked Rusty about the little green engine. Rusty was quiet for a moment, then finally answered. I think, I'm pretty sure it was a mountain goat. It wasn't a mountain goat, peeped Thomas. It was an engine. The next morning, as Thomas puffed to the quarry, he saw 
the little green engine again. Who are you? Thomas asked. Without saying a word, the green engine puffed off. Thomas sped after him. Go, Luke, cried Scarloli, as he and the other narrow gauge engines rode into position to block Thomas. Scarloli, puffed Thomas, who is Luke? Why does he keep puffing away? Why will none of you talk to me about him? Thomas, you are our friend, said Scarloli. So we trust you, the other engines whistled in agreement. Luke hides here at the Blue Mountain Quarry because he's scared. Scarloli said, once long ago, Luke did something very bad. He thinks if anyone finds him, he will be sent away from Sodar forever. That's why we make sure he always stay hidden. Thomas promised to keep the secret locked in his funnel. When Thomas had finished working that night, he decided he needed some time to think. So he steamed to a quiet hill by himself. What did Luke do that was so bad? Thomas wondered aloud. Don't worry, Luke. I'll find a way to help you. But Thomas wasn't really alone. Someone was watching and hoping that Thomas could find a way to help. The next morning, as Thomas chuffed to work, Luke appeared by his side. Hi, Thomas, he said. I'm sorry I hid from you. I didn't know you. But now, I wonder, will you be my friend? I'd like that, Luke, said Thomas. I'd like that very much. Thomas and Luke worked together at the boulder drop all day. Luke dropped giant rocks down the chute, and Thomas collected the broken gravel at the bottom. Suddenly, a horn honked. Winston had arrived carrying Sir Topham Hatt and Mr. Percival, the controller of the narrow gauge railway. Luke quickly hid. Thank you for your work, Thomas, said Mr. Percival. Paxton will now take over again. When Winston had motored away, Thomas asked Luke why he felt he had to hide. I did something very bad, said Luke. I've done bad things too, Pete Thomas. Once, I steamed right past a danger sign and fell into a mine. I'm still here. Luke giggled. The two new friends were so busy talking that they didn't hear Paxton puff up behind them. Paxton listened quietly as Luke told his story. I first came to the island of Sodar on a boat, said Luke. Next to me was a little yellow engine. He was chained to the deck like I was. He had come from far away. A storm blew in and the ship was tossed around on the waves. My chains rattled something fierce. The little yellow engine was scared. He spoke a strange language I didn't understand. I wanted to reassure him, but I didn't know how. We finally reached Sodar, but the little yellow engine still looked scared. The dock workers wanted to lift him off right away, but I pleaded to be first. They agreed, and I was happy. But then I bumped into the little yellow engine and sent him splashing into the sea. Paxton couldn't believe what he had heard. He raced off to tell Diesel. An idea flew into Thomas's funnel. I know what I'll do, said Thomas. I'll find out what happened to that little yellow engine. Maybe he's at the diesel works. Thomas reached the diesel works just as Paxton finished telling Diesel the story. Thomas was shocked. No one else was supposed to know about Luke and the little yellow engine. We have to tell Sir Topham Hat and Mr. Percival, said Diesel. 
They'll make Luke leave forever. Thomas was worried. He had to find that little yellow engine before Diesel could get Luke in trouble. Thomas chuffed to the steamworks, where Victor was hard at work. Victor, do you remember fixing a little yellow engine that fell into the sea? Thomas asked. Victor stopped working immediately. His eyes were wide with surprise. Thomas suddenly understood. Cinders and ashes, whistled Thomas. You were that engine that fell into the sea? You are right, Thomas, said Victor. It was me. Victor's story about his trip to the island of Sodar was the same as Luke's, except for one important detail. During the storm, a big wave broke the chains holding my wheels, Victor said. Nothing held me to the deck. I called to the crew, but they didn't understand me. No one could help me. I barely made it to the dock, Victor went on. And when they lifted the excited green engine, he swayed and bumped into me. I slid into the sea because there were no chains to stop me. When Cranky finally fished me out, I was in a terrible state. So it was all an accident, peeped Thomas. And you were repaired? Yes, replied Victor. I chose to be painted red, a bright new color for my bright new life. I have to tell Luke, said Thomas. Is uh, Luke the little green engine, asked Victor. Yes, said Thomas, and he needs your help. Later that day, Diesel and Paxton found Luke at the Blue Mountain Quarry. Luke rode up the narrow gauge tracks where Thomas, Diesel, and Paxton's standard gauge wheels couldn't follow. You can run! But you can't hide, shouted Diesel. Sir Topham Hat is on his way. He's going to kick you off, Sodar. Thomas can't save you now. Yes, I can, peeped Thomas as he sped into the quarry. The narrow gauge engines were mad because they thought Thomas had revealed Luke's secret. Thomas didn't have time to explain. Rocky, please lift me onto Owen's platform. I have to talk to Luke. Hold on tight, shouted Rocky, and he hoisted Thomas up as high as he could. But it wasn't high enough. Thomas needed Owen's help to climb higher up the quarry's rocky walls. Owen was nervous about lifting the heavy engine. With a creak and a grunt, Owen's platform started to rise. Thomas went higher and higher until he reached the top of the incline. Upper Terrence, shouted Owen. Boulder Drop and Blunden Bridge. Well done, Thomas Pete. But there was a problem. Thomas's wheels were too big for the narrow gauge tracks. They skidded and slid and jumped off the rails. Thomas rode toward the edge of the cliff. Help! Thomas Pete. Just then, Luke came around a bend. Watch out, Thomas, cried Diesel. He's going to push you off, just like he did to that yellow engine. Everyone waited. They watched as Luke slowly rode toward Thomas. Don't worry, Thomas, said Luke. I'll pull you back to Owen. Luke buffered gently to Thomas and slowly but surely pulled him back toward the platform. You're doing it, Luke whistled Thomas. Luke felt stronger than he had ever felt before. Luke got Thomas safely to Owen's platform, but the weight of the two engines together was too much for Owen. The platform began to drop straight down. Whoa! cried Luke. Cinders and ashes! shouted Thomas. You're too heavy! Owen grunted as he tried to slow the platform. Owen strained and struggled and worked his hardest. Gears whined, sparks flew. Owen stopped the platform before it hit the ground. 
Thomas and Luke were safe. The engines all whistled and cheered, except for Diesel, who scowled. Just then, Sir Topham Hatt and Mr. Percival arrived. They were confused and more than a little angry. Thomas, what are you doing here? asked Sir Topham Hatt. Rocky, bring those engines down from the unloading platform. Little Luke was scared. Everyone held their breath. That engine up there is called Luke, said Diesel. He's a bad engine. He pushed a yellow engine into the sea. Thomas has been hiding him up there. It's not like that at all, sir, Thomas peeped. I can explain, but Thomas didn't have to say another word. Victor steamed into the quarry. Everyone was very surprised to see him. I have come here to meet an engine I have not seen in a very long time, Victor puffed. His name is Luke. Rocky set Luke down. The little green engine was scared. Luke, you didn't push me, Victor said. I slipped off. My wheel chains had broken. It was an accident. But it can't be you. You're not a yellow engine, Luke said. I was yellow. Victor explained, but I was painted red when Sir Topham Hatt had me repaired. You should come down and visit me at the steamworks. You can also get a coat of paint and a polish. You will be a new engine too. Luke laughed. For the first time in a long, long time, he was truly happy. Sir Topham Hatt was very upset with Diesel. You didn't find out the whole story before you caused confusion and delay, he said. It's always important to find out what really happened, because what really happened is what really matters. Well done, Thomas, said Sir Topham Hatt. Today is a happy day for Mr. Percival and all his engines. Thomas has made it a happy day, sir, Luke said. He's my hero and my friend. We must be very proud of all of our engines, said Mr. Percival. You are all really useful. Thomas and all his friends, new and old, whistled happily. Well, that ends our story. And Thomas did not disappoint. This was a great story. What did you think, Triangel? Oh, I was all about this story. It had such a huge takeaway. Did you catch that one? And you know I did. I saw Diesel run rampant with a piece of story. Not a whole or the full story, but a piece of story because he saw something in it for him if he could get his narrative put out there. Oh, I was seeing Diesel try to work his magic but the thing about it that he didn't realize is that the truth, the true truth, will always find its way to the light. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, people try to hide the truth all the time. And sometimes it takes a while for the truth to come out to the light, but it never fails to do so. Well, my young readers, I hope you enjoyed this story. We did. There were many, many takeaways, I think. But we have come to our end, and we will see you all on the next episode. Bye!